How's it going? Oh, thanks, guys. Good morning. It is a good day. Okay. <laughs> you guys are hot today. Crazy. Wow. What a time to be alive. Am I right? Such a good day to be in church. It's good to see you guys. Uh, I know Pastor Quincy just mentioned it, but serve day yesterday was crazy. It was so good. Let's just cheer for that again. It was amazing. It was such a powerful day. So good. As he said, 147 is our specific count of all the people that went out. It's incredible. And before we jump into things today, I, I just want to even share something that I kind of realized yesterday as we were in morning prayer. We've got Saturday morning prayer every, every week, and we were there praying into serve day and just had this moment of realization that uh, of the significance that there were 12 groups going out um, and just realizing the significance in that number, even thinking back to when Jesus sent out his 12 disciples as the apostles, which we're even going to talk a little bit about today. And out of that, out of the 12, there's multiplication. That's where the early church began and now it's worldwide. And I think it's significant because yesterday was our first serve day, but it is only the beginning. It's only the beginning. It's only going to grow from here. And yesterday was a powerful day in and of itself, but there is more coming. It's so good. And I'm excited for our city and the influence out of, out of the love deposits and the, the love sacrifice that you guys made yesterday. So thank you to all of you who are involved. Um, so we are now into week three, uh, as has been said, of the summer mixtape series. If you haven't been here for the past two, uh, you've been missing out. We have heard some fiery messages. Uh, two weeks ago, we heard from the incredible, our very own Pastor Natasha, and she brought the house down. Uh, if you haven't heard that one or the one last week, I'd highly recommend go check out the podcast sometime this week. They've been incredible. Uh, 10 out of 10, would recommend, would listen again, so check them out. Um, Pastor Natasha chatted with us and urged us uh, forward in our purpose, urged us to stay focused on our purpose, and then also reminded us that the people here in our city are our people. They're our people, and we've actually been sent to help build them up. And then last week, uh, our good friend, Pastor Andy Moore, uh, was in the house, and he gave a powerful word on obedience and reminded us through looking at the life of Noah uh, that uh, obedience is actually an act of faith, and that obedience, consecutive obedience, actually stirs up God's favor in our lives, and it fuels God's favor. So these are powerful things, but what I love isn't just them in and of themselves, but it's so cool to me that we can be in a summer series, uh, one that actually has no actual theme, like summer mixtape, for example. Uh, it's so vague. Uh, and then we can also have a few consecutive different speakers up on the stage, all talking about different things that the Lord has said to them, and yet somehow we begin to see this common thread being woven through. And it's because I believe God has something to say. He has something to say through this series uh, to us for this season in the here and now. And it's amazing. He speaks through us in unity. And we're actually going to continue on in that today. Uh, there's concepts around purpose and obedience that we're going to continue unpacking this morning. So if you have your Bible or the Bible app on your phone, uh, can you jump with me over to Matthew 10, verses 16 to 20? Matthew 10, verse 16. I love the book of Matthew. It's, uh, as you're getting there, it's actually, it's one of my favorite gospels. Uh, it's just, it's written in a different way. If you read through Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Matthew seems to be written a little bit different than the others in the sense that he actually uh, seems to collect a lot of what Jesus said and did into a bunch of different themes. So if you've been around the church a lot, you might have heard of the Sermon on the Mount. That's kind of the first one that's all about lifestyle. And then the second one, which is where we could, we're going to be jumping in, it, it seems to be all about mission. So really changing it up this morning, missions guy talking on mission. <laughs> but it's good stuff, guys. Uh, so yeah, you're probably there long ago. So Matthew 10, verse 16, and it says here, I am sending you out. This is Jesus speaking to his 12 disciples. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and be flogged in the synagogues. So really encouraging pep talk this morning. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings 
as witnesses to them and to other unbelievers. Guys, there is so much packed into this passage that we just read, not even mentioning the verses that are around it in that chapter. There's so much there, and as I'm sure you've quickly caught on to, it's talking about persecution. It's not light, but it's talking about persecution and pushback, but then it's also talking about the influence, the incredible influence that the gospel and that speakers of the gospel can have. And like I said, we've been talking in the past couple weeks about staying focused on our purpose and about obedience and consistency and obedience, and then we now enter into this conversation that Jesus is having with his disciples into this impassioned moment where Jesus is setting the scene for what they're about to encounter, for the pushback that they're about to encounter, but then all of a sudden he inserts this incredible promise and potential of influence and favor to be brought before kings and to see nations saved as a result. So if over the past couple of weeks as we've been talking about purpose, you've been sitting there wondering, well, what even is my purpose? What is mine? You actually just caught a little glimpse of it. <clears throat> I think we should pray. Let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for who you are. You are such a good God. You are so good, God, and we thank you that today, here in this room, nobody is here by accident. None of us are. You have brought us here for such a time as this because you want to speak to us, God, and we thank you for that. So we just ask, Lord, that this morning you would help us to better understand our purpose and how to live it out with you. Amen. So I'm going to get real for a moment. Uh, for the past little while, I, I've recently been donating to a charity, and I know it's usually kind of taboo to talk about, like, your finances or donating, but I, I got to tell you this one. Um, I've recently been donating consistently every two weeks uh, to a charity that I like to support called Good Life Fitness. And <clears throat> you might have heard of it. And I know this will probably come as a shock to most of you because I look like a fitness god, um, but I actually never have been, and uh, I don't think I ever will be, very good friends with the gym. I just never have, honestly, with athletics in general, if we're being real honest, even just with movement as a whole, we just don't seem to get along. I'm not good at it. And, you know, whether it's the gym or whether it's those group activities like sports and stuff, I just, I can't handle it, can't do it. Um, but I am, I'm trying to get better, and I've been trying to play more ping pong recently because I'm trying to get people to think that I'm a fun person and that I like activities. Um, but it's honestly been quite a challenging season, stepping out in faith in that way. Um, what I can do, <laughs> thank you, thanks, Brian. Uh, what I can do is eat. I'm good at food. I'm real good at it, and so usually I try and just stick with what I'm good at. Um, but recently, I was having a conversation with some people. Actually, I'm pretty sure it was with my new roommate, uh, Marcus, over here. He's from America, so you can pray for him. Actually, both my roommates are from America, so you can pray for me. <laughs> pray for me. Don't bother with them. But I was telling him that I recently got this membership, this gym membership back in June, uh, this one I'm referring to at Good Life. And the conversation was going relatively well. I hadn't thought too much about all this until his reaction. Um, but it was going well as far as embarrassing conversations go until uh, he actually caught on to the fact that I was referring to June of 2016, uh, not, not last June, that I was talking about, in fact, yes, I have for over a year been donating $20.25 every two weeks to a gym I've never walked into. <laughs> um, and so I, I've probably, at this point, lost the respect of a couple of you, a handful, maybe like Fitness Jay here. I can see the judgment in his eyes already. Uh, or if you're frugal with your budget, probably lost your respect as well. But I'm not going to try and regain it. That's not what I'm here for. Um, but to be honest, I think that there's probably more of you than that handful who are sitting there thinking, oh, thank God, I'm not the only one. You know, and I could be wrong. I'm not going to try and make you admit that this morning, but that's at least what I'd like to think. Um, my expectation is that I'm not the only one who at some point has been donating to the fitness industry. Uh, but it actually, it makes me wonder how many of us are members but who aren't accessing the benefits. How many of us are members but aren't accessing everything that comes with that title? And you guys, I don't want any of us to miss out on what comes with being a part of this community, what comes up with a, being a part of this church and with the kingdom of heaven. So this morning, there's three things that I don't want you to miss out on. I don't want you to miss out on your identity. I don't want you to miss out on your purpose. And I don't want you to miss out on the favor of God. 
three things. So if you can jump over with me now to Luke chapter 19. We're changing it up here. We're jumping away from Matthew for a little bit, obviously. Uh, but we're still going to be looking at and catching another glimpse into the life of Jesus while he was still on earth, into something that Jesus was saying and doing while he was here, just from Luke's angle. And if you've been around the church for a while, you might be familiar with the verses leading up to this passage and maybe a little less so with what we're going to read here. But the scene of what we're coming out of is Jesus is nearing the city of Jerusalem. He's on his way to the city. And he's riding a donkey, which a couple of his disciples had, had gotten for him. And as he was nearing Jerusalem, the, the street was just lined with people. It was lined with people who were praising his name, who were yelling out and singing out praises to Jesus. And they were laying down palm branches and cloth just as a sign of respect um, for, to make way for him to the city. So it was this um, intensely positive experience, a uh, worshipful experience. And then all of a sudden, right as we jump in here, something switches. And it says, but as he came closer to Jerusalem and saw the city ahead, he began to weep. And some versions say he began to wail. It was an intensely sorrowful moment. And then Jesus declared, how I wish today that you of all people, he's speaking to Jerusalem, who he's, who, the people he's nearing, how I wish today that you of all people would understand the way to peace. But now it is too late and peace is hidden from your eyes. We're going to come back to that. But then it says, before long your enemies will build ramparts against your walls and encircle you and close in on you from every side. I have no idea what ramparts are, but the tone here sounds negative. <laughs> they will crush you into the ground and your children with you. Your enemies will not leave a single stone in place because, because you did not recognize it when God visited you. He says, how I wish today that you of all people would understand the way to peace, but now it's too late. The way to peace has been hidden from your eyes. And the interesting part here is that the name Jerusalem actually means city of peace. So Jesus is here nearing the city of peace and begins to weep for these people, saying, how I wish that you knew the way to peace. Jerusalem was missing out on the way to peace. They didn't know the way to peace, even though that was literally their identity. So you can actually miss your identity. You can be given an identity and choose to walk outside of it. You can be a member like me and choose not to access the benefits of your title. I got to tell you this morning, your identity is actually not uncertain. If you feel like you don't know it, um, to be honest, you've actually just been looking in the wrong place. And at the end of this message, we're going to give you an opportunity to step forward into your identity, to step forward into that. But... Jerusalem was on the way to destruction because it hadn't grabbed a hold of its identity. Because it hadn't grabbed a hold of it, but then it didn't know its identity because it didn't recognize its creator. Your identity is in your creator. Do you know him? Have you recognized when he's visited you? And guys, we're, we're starting with this because you can't know your purpose. You can't hear your purpose if you don't know who you are. We've got to start there. But if we recognize our creator, uh, if we recognize him, then our membership is actually never going to be in question. God has already named you, and if we choose to believe in him, then he's actually already enlisted you as well. And now we have a, an opportunity to not, not just be a member, but to fully access everything that comes with the membership. Your membership has given you access to your identity. Don't miss out on your identity. And so we're going to jump back into Luke here, right where we are, we're already reading just the following verse. So Luke 19, again, but verse 45 and 46. And so at this point, Jesus has entered the city, and it says, Then Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out the people selling animals for sacrifices. He said to them, The scriptures declare, My temple will be a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. My house will be a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. And one of the preachers that I, I like to listen to sometimes outside of EC recently really convicted me on his take around this scripture, around this passage. What we see here is Jesus has entered the city after this emotional roller coaster of being worshipped by multitudes, being worshipped and praised, and then all of a sudden getting to this sorrowful place uh, of just weeping for this city who was missing out on its opportunity for salvation. And then now he enters into the city and goes to the temple and begins uh, driving them out and declaring that you have changed it from a house of prayer to a house of thieves. Prayerlessness in the, God, in the house of God is thievery. 
Prayerlessness in this house is thievery. We, you and I, we are called. We are called not just to be members, not just to occupy our space, but we are called towards influence. We are called to make a difference in the kingdom of, of heaven. And if we are not in prayer, then we actually risk robbing God of his purposes for us, of what he wants to do through us. In the same way that we can miss out on our identity because we haven't recognized our creator, I think there are actually a lot of us who have been missing out on our purpose because we don't spend time with our leader. And you know, I don't, personally, I don't want to miss out on my opportunity for eternal influence just because I wasn't listening. I don't want uh, to, to be in that place. I want to be in a place where I am postured at all points and always ready to hear every aspect of my purpose, every aspect of who I am and the reason that I'm here. I want to be postured in a way where I can also then hear every aspect and step of obedience that's going to get me towards fulfilling that purpose. And you know, I just got to let you know, I'm not saying this out of a place of having attained this. I have not, but I'm saying this out of a place of I believe the Spirit is reminding us this morning to get back to a place of prayer. And you know, last week we, we saw from, uh, from Pastor Andy, Noah displaying incredible and consistent obedience throughout his life, but he had to hear his, his purpose before he could carry it out. He had to hear his purpose. We have to hear our purpose before we can walk in obedience. And it's by walking in obedience that, as we see in Matthew, we can even begin to get to a point of walking out our purpose and seeing that influence that has been promised. And so, church, you see, we're not going to be a den of thieves. We're not going to be a den of thieves. That is why every Saturday morning we have a prayer meeting at 8 till 9. And that's open. You're welcome to be there. That's why we do that. That's why 21 days, twice a year, we set aside time to fast and pray, to focus on getting back into the plans of God, getting in his will. You know, because in prayer, that's where we find purpose. It's in prayer that, that the, the supernatural strategies of God are actually revealed to us. It's in prayer that the authority of God, which he's actually given to us, becomes understood. It's in prayer that, that we, as God's people, are able to push back the powers of darkness and able to get away from our own will and back into God's plan. So if you want to know your purpose, if you want to know your purpose, it is time to pray. That's the key. If you want to walk in consistent obedience, it is time to pray. That is the key to obedience. If you want to grab a hold of the influence that Jesus promised the apostles, it's time to pray. That is actually the key to influence and being brought before kings and emperors. That's the key. In this house, we are not willing to miss our moment. In this house, we are not going to be willing to miss our purpose. We are not willing to miss our opportunity for influence when there are a, thousand, a million people in Calgary alone whose lives are on the line. Your membership has given you access to purpose. It is time to pray. Don't miss out on your purpose. So let's jump back. We're, we've been in Luke for a little bit. We're going to jump back to Matthew now, back to where, what we read at the beginning, back to where we see this incredible promise of favor, where Jesus first said, on my account, you will be brought before emperors and kings, governors and kings for my sake, to witness to them and to other unbelievers. And guys, favor in the kingdom of heaven, it's a funny thing. It is. It's a weird one. And as I said earlier, we started off talking about identity specifically because you need to know your identity to know your purpose. And now we've been talking about knowing and hearing your purpose because it's by hearing our purpose that we get set onto a trajectory of eventually then having the potential to see that culmination of incredible favor, that moment that God first gives us foresight to when he speaks purpose into our lives. So we're getting there. The groundwork has been laid. And I know it's a little intense this morning, but it's good. It's good. It's going to get us there. We're not going to miss our identity. We're laying the groundwork, guys. And I believe for everyone in this room, we're not going to miss our identity. And we're not going to miss our purpose. But, you know, I think we often can, maybe I shouldn't say often, but I'll say it's easy for us to take this favor piece of this passage out of context a little bit, and, and even from passages like it. It's easy to, uh, because there's a lot surrounding it that is, is difficult to talk about it. And, and I don't want to retract away from the promise because no matter the context, that promise is there. That promise of influence and favor and purpose is there, but we can't read that without acknowledging what's before it. 
would surround it. We can't read that without understanding that they were only brought before governors and kings, brought before royalty because they had actually been uh, arrested for preaching the gospel. And then before they were brought to the leaders, they were actually flogged in the synagogue. They were whipped repeatedly. So walking in favor, being brought before kings and emperors, standing in front of royalty, to me that sounds amazing. I want that. I don't know about you, but yeah, queen, queen of Britain or whatever, I'd stand in front of her. <laughs> I was like weirdly casual, but I would. I, I want that. You know, things like that, that type of influence of being able to be face to face with the leaders of our time. But then when we see what Jesus guarantees to his people before that, it's all about pushback and persecution. And I think that there's many of us, and myself included, I have been here. I still find myself here sometimes. There are many of us who get to a place of feeling like we deserve the platform. And sometimes not just feeling that way, but even getting to a place of expressing that. And I've heard it a lot more than I'd actually like to admit But we get to this place of expressing, I deserve the platform. I deserve this promotion. I am the one that actually should be in leadership. I deserve more. And, you know, I actually agree with you. I do. I do agree with you. I do believe there's so much more for you. There is more for us. There is so much more. But it was pushback that brought the platform. It was pushback that brought the platform. We can't forget that to get there. There was a promise of persecution and opposition and suffering beforehand. So I'd like to challenge us this morning when we see people who are standing in a place of influence, when we see people who are standing in a position of witnessing to the leaders of our time, when we see people who have influence who are changing communities and bringing change to nations, don't forget what it cost for them to get there. Don't forget the price that is paid on either end of influence. Favor, as I said, is a funny thing, because favor doesn't always look like favor. And even if we look at the life of Joseph in the Bible, his favor, the favor he didn't or the favor he experienced didn't always look like favor either. Joseph was a guy who knew who he was, and he knew his purpose from super early on in his youth. And I love his story because as you read through it, it's so evident he didn't miss his moment. He lived, he lived it out. And, you know, from early on and all through his life, he was actually incredibly successful. We see it over and over in his life. But then we also blatantly read in there that his success came because he was walking in God's favor. It directly directly links them, his success and his favor. But then we also see, as we read through that, that at least to me, his circumstances don't seem like what we would typically expect when we think of somebody who's walking in God's favor. And I think that even for Joseph, the circumstances that he was walking through wasn't what he expected when he first foresaw his purpose. If you don't know the life of Joseph, we're not going to unpack it all this morning. It's a wild ride, and there's a lot of content in there. Um, But as I already mentioned, very early on, God spoke his purpose to him. Through a series of dreams, he actually got to foresee the influence and the success that was coming in his future. He saw all that, but then it was actually after he saw that, that all of a sudden his brothers, his own brothers, sold him into slavery. And then a little while after that, through a series of events, he was then thrown into prison. So both of these are situations and circumstances that obviously are not ideal and don't seem like they have anything to do with favor. But then we also read, uh, and we're going to jump into a couple of them even, but it wasn't just that he experienced favor between these seasons. It wasn't that there were these negative circumstances that he was outside of God's will and the enemy all of a sudden had power and he wasn't in favor. It was actually, we see in the scripture that uh, God gave him favor in slavery and God gave him favor in prison. So in Genesis 39, 2 to 6, Uh, It'll be on the screen as well, I believe. It says that the Lord was with Joseph. This is when he was in slavery. So he succeeded in everything he did as he served in the home of his Egyptian master. Potiphar, the master, noticed this and realized that the Lord was with Joseph, giving him success in everything he did. 
This pleased Potiphar, so he soon made Joseph his personal attendant. He put him in charge of his entire household and everything he owned. From the day Joseph was put in charge of his master's household and property, the Lord then began to bless Potiphar's household for Joseph's sake. So now Joseph and this entire master household is being blessed. All of his household affairs ran smoothly and his crops and livestock flourished. So Potiphar gave Joseph complete administrative responsibility over everything he owned. So we find Joseph here as a foreign slave, all of a sudden elevated into this position of leadership, still in slavery, but walking in God's favor. And you know, Pastor Andy last week defined God's favor as his demonstrated delight, which, and I loved that. And it's so interesting to me that we see that here, even in the midst of slavery, demonstrated delight in Joseph. It's not dependent on his circumstance. And then all of a sudden, a little while later, even in this place of favor, uh, Potiphar's wife, the, the slave master's wife, falsely accuses Joseph of some things, and so he gets thrown into prison. So then in, in Genesis 39, verse 21, we, we read, uh, But the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and showed him the, his faithful love. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. Before long, the warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and over everything that happened in the prison. And it goes on. Again, we see crazy success in the midst of prison. And the Lord caused everything he did to succeed. And I found when I was reading through these types of stories in Joseph's life, his attitude was always the same. It was always, it read like this in such a way where I for a moment forgot that he was in prison and forgot for a time that he was actually in slavery because of the attitude of how it's written. The whole time, his attitude doesn't change, and even his commitment to living out his purpose doesn't shift. And I think a lot of times we can miss out on continued favor because we think that favor only includes the good stuff. Favor is a funny thing. Often when we face opposition, we're tempted to stop seeing God's overarching hand in the circumstance, and we can actually allow it then to derail us from our purpose and to derail us from our mission. But it doesn't have to. Instead of Joseph freaking out and starting to bring everything into his own hands because circumstances were going, obviously, not as he would have planned, instead of doing that and instead of preserving his own life, he understood that pushback cannot derail purpose. It can't. He understood and recognized that opposition is part of the mission. Guys, it is not our job to preserve our own life. It's not our job. If we live trying to preserve ourselves, trying to even cling to the comfort and the safety that, that we expect, then we actually step outside of obedience. We step outside of it because we're taking it into our own hands. We're taking it into the natural when it's supposed to be a supernatural thing. Because we are not called to comfort and safety. We're actually, we are called to something so much beyond that, beyond ourselves, and so much greater so much greater than us and our own situations. We have been called to push back the powers of darkness for the sake of the captives, for the sake of the lost. That is supernatural. That's what we've been called to. We have been called to be a people through whom God can speak, to be a people through who, who, who know who they are and who know their purpose and who have given up their plans but are now living out the plans of God. <clears throat> it's when we're in that place, actually, that we experience God's favor. It's when we're in that place that God brings us through the opposition to the point of influence, to the promise of influence. Your membership gives you access to favor. Don't miss out on your favor just because of what it looks like. And you know, Joseph, he made it through the pushback. He made it through. And okay, this just came to mind, so I might regret saying it. But I, I just had a, a a flashback to when I was in like elementary and junior high. I was a weird kid, so get prepared. But um, I had this flashback to this thing that I love to do. And as I said, I love to eat. And I don't care what the food is. I don't care if it's good or bad. I just like to ingest things. And so uh, especially at youth group. Youth group was a prime. Uh, I'd be in this state of depression because they'd be doing dodgeball and things like that. But then all of a sudden, it would come time for like the fear factor type stuff, you know? It's like, like have, have any of you heard of like the happy shake? You know, like blending up the happy meal and then getting people to drink it? And, like, honestly, that's just the beginning. <laughs> like, that's the easiest one. I'll do it for you later if you want. I don't even care. Um, 
But I loved those. That was my moment. But I just, I remember sometimes people would ask me about it, and I don't know if I thought I was cool. Like, it did not get me the ladies, but I kept doing it. Um, thought it would make me friends. But I, I would always just say, like, the temporary disgust doesn't matter because I get a prize out of it, you know? So I wouldn't even always volunteer myself. I would wait, let the people who I knew were suckers go up and try, and then they'd puke or, I, it's gross to talk about that here, I'm sorry, or, or they would just give up, and so then I'd saunter up and I'd finish it off, you know? And, like, obviously the crowd would go wild. Um, but it was worth it. There was a purpose in it because you get, like, a Dairy Queen blizzard or something, you know? Like, there was a glory out of that that I loved. <laughs> I don't even remember how that fit in. <laughs> but now you know. But no, honestly, there's a temporary opposition or temporary suffering that we walk through in this life that there is glory out of, that there is promise in. The pushback cannot derail the purpose, and it can't derail us from eventually receiving our favor and seeing our favor. And Joseph made it through. He made it through the pushback. He eventually got to be brought before the ruler, Pharaoh, the ruler of Egypt. He got brought before him. The Lord gave him the words to say. And then Pharaoh elevated him to second in command of all of Egypt, a nation he wasn't even from. And then because of that, that elevation in status, he was able to save that entire Egyptian nation and also his own nation that he was from. So much power. And you know, I think, oh, I know so. There is parallel here to what Jesus walked through. Jesus is not sending out his apostles. He hasn't sent us out not having walked through what he's talking about. And even more. Jesus walked through not just pushback and the suffering that we expect, but he walked through all the way to the point of death and going into hell for our sake. Not just for the sake of a nation, not just for the sake of the Israelites and the Jews, but for the Gentiles, for us, for the sake of the world. Now the entire world has access to him. Let's fully access the benefits of the membership we've been given. On my account, guys, we will. We will know our identity. And on his account, we will be brought before governors and kings. I'm saying that this morning. We will be brought before and we will be given the words to say. Church, we will walk in favor and be used by God for the saving of this nation. Let's fully access it. I'd like you to bow your heads. We're going to pray together. <clears throat> You know, maybe you're here this morning and you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. Maybe you're here and what I just said, you didn't even realize. You didn't even realize that Jesus went through this type of opposition and suffering specifically for you, for your sake. You know, that he was a willing sacrifice for you so that you could have an opportunity to know him and to know your identity and your purpose and to do life with him. And I don't, know what you, I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what state you're at this morning. If, if you feel like you just can't catch a break, if life's not been going your way, I don't know. But maybe you're, you're sitting here and you feel like there's a gap between you and your identity. Maybe that you're feeling like there's a gap between you and knowing your purpose. Maybe you feel like there's a gap between you and, and doing life in the favor of God that we're talking about. And, you know, I don't only want you to not miss out on these good things of an identity that is secure and a purpose that you get to fulfill and the favor. These are amazing gifts of God, but I don't want you to miss out on the opportunity of just knowing Jesus, just knowing and experiencing his incredible love, the incredible love and life that he has for you. And you know, here at EC, we do everything that we can to make this opportunity available for you. We don't want anyone, including you, we don't want anyone to come in and leave and go back out the doors without having the opportunity to know who Jesus is, to know that your identity is in him. And like we talked about earlier, your identity is in your creator. We want you to know your creator. And if you feel like that's you this morning, if, if you haven't found your identity in Jesus yet, if you haven't chosen to invite, it, invite him into your life, and chosen to do this life with him, if that's you, then on the count of three, would you just raise your hand? 
You know, he is the source of all things good. He is the source of your identity. And in a single moment, he can speak that to you and he can speak purpose into your life and draw you into a life of favor. So if that's you this morning and you want to make that decision here with us, then on the count of three, would you just raise your hand? One, two, don't do life alone. Three, thank you. Thank you. That's amazing. You can put your hands down. Experience Church, we're going to pray this prayer together and support our friends who have just made that decision this morning. So would you repeat this after me? Jesus, I'm broken and I'm incomplete and I need you. I can't do life without you. Come into my life today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's amazing, guys. Let's give it up for the people that made that decision this morning.